In order to calculate out the weight and balance, there's a few things that we need. We're going to need our weight and balance sheet. Now, the copy is kept in the airplane, but also in our flight school, we have notebooks that we've photocopied all the copies out of the airplane so you can use them to calculate your weight and balance before each flight. So this piece of paper is the first thing that you're going to need. And the second thing you would need is in the pilot operating handbook, there's a, a section in here under section six that's all about the weight and balance. And we're going to need to use these graphs to calculate out the weight and balance to make sure our airplane's not too nose heavy or too tail heavy. Before we begin the calculation, there are a few terms that we're going to have to learn. Um, this is a profile view of an airplane, and the first term we need to learn is datum line. Datum line is an imaginary line assigned to the aircraft by the manufacturer. It does not change. So this is datum line, and the datum line in most all of these smaller airplane, airplanes are the firewall. Anything in front of the datum line would be considered a negative value, and anything behind the datum line would be considered a positive value. The next thing we need to consider are front seat passengers, rear seat passengers, any fuel. This is a high wing airplane, so the fuel will be kept up in the top. And then if we have any baggage. Some airplanes may also have a uh, second baggage compartment. Now, when we're trying to calculate out our weight and balance, we're considering the people and the fuel and the baggage and we're considering how far they are, the distance they are from this datum line. If I take the weight of this person right here and the distance, this distance is called an arm, and I'm going to take the weight times the arm, and that's going to give me the moment. So the equation that we have to use is weight times arm equals moment. Now the moment is something you've been familiar with most of your life. When you were a child, I'm sure at one time or another, you played on a teeter-totter or a seesaw, and you realized right away that if there was a heavier person on this end and a smaller person on this end, you knew which way the seesaw or teeter-totter was going to tilt. There were two ways to make this level. You could either move the person closer to the pivot point, or you could move the pivot point uh, closer to the heavier person, and it would balance and become level. Well, the problem is with the airplane is we only have a small range where the airplane could pivot. And we call that the envelope. So the envelope is the place where the plane could pivot or be uh, balanced with still having favorable characteristics. Anything forward of this, we call it a nose heavy or forward center of gravity. And anything back here would be an aft center of gravity or aft CG being tail heavy. To continue calculating our center of gravity, we have to consider the basic empty weight. We have to consider our front seat passengers, our rear passengers, our baggage, our fuel. Now, it's questionable if there's a baggage to compartment. It depends on what airplane that you're in, or also sometimes the oil may or may not be considered in the basic empty weight. Now to further clarify the basic empty weight, that is the airplane without people, bags, and usable fuel. When, when we have the fuel tanks filled with fuel, there's still always a little part of that that we can never access. So when we talk about the empty weight, that unusable fuel is calculated in with the empty weight of the aircraft. And most of the time, the oil would also be calculated in with the basic empty weight. You'd have to check each airplane's operator's, tank, uh, operator's manual to see if that was included or not. Then the front seat passengers, if you have two people, you add the weight together and put that there. And then rear, same thing. And the baggage compartment, whatever you put in there and then your total gallons. Now remember that your fuel weighs six pounds per gallon. So don't put the number of gallons there, you have to put the weight there. See, it's a weight category. What we are after is the total weight. So we're going to add up all of these items and get the total weight, and then we want the total moment. So we're going to add up all these, moment, all these items and get our total moment. 
If I take the total moment and divide it by the total weight, that gives me my actual CG, which is center of gravity. So I would take the total weight, take the total moment, divide one from the other, and that actually gives me my center of gravity. Sometimes you have to take it to this last step, and sometimes, according to the graphs, we only need to take it this far. We're going to do a weight and balance calculation, and what we need to look at is the actual weight and balance form from the aircraft. And we're looking right here under the max gross, I mean, not the max gross weight, but the, the current basic empty weight of the airplane. It says 1450.25, and then on this column, it gives us the moment. So where I've been putting weight times arm equals moment, if they've already given me the moment, there's no need to write the arm and do that actual multiplication. So because what I'm actually after is the weight and the moment. So the basic empty weight of this airplane is 1450.25. The moment, it says 56,922.23. That's a very big number, it's messy and hard to work with, so what we usually do is we'll divide it by 1,000 and make this number be 56.9. If you notice on this graph that we're going to use in just a moment, the bottom numbers are at the moment also, and they have also been divided by 1,000. So as long as everything's been divided by 1,000, when we do our addition, we shouldn't have a problem. So we're going to make this number 56.9 because we divided it by 1,000. Okay. Now, the next one is our front seat passengers, our front seat people, and let's say that between the flight instructor and the student, the weight was 300 pounds. Now, I need to get the arm or the moment in order to get my moment. By using this graph, it calculates the arm for you. All I have to do is use this weight scale, and I go up to 300, and then I go across, and this first line is labeled pilot and front passenger. So if I go to 300 pounds and go straight down, then I'll see what my moment is. Now be careful, pay attention, because if this is 10 and this is 15, each slash is worth 2. So it's 10, 10.5, 11, 11.5, 12, and so on. So it looks like 300 goes over two lines, so I would call that moment 11. Let's say that we have uh, 150 pounds of a passenger that's sitting in the rear. My passenger line is this long line right here. So I go up to 150, I go straight across to my rear passengers, and then I drop straight down. This number also appears to be 11. Now again, I'm reminding you that's really 11,000, but we've divided it by that thousand, so it's okay to just put 11. The fuel, remember, is in gallons. This airplane holds 40 usable gallons, so I need to put 40 times 6 is 240 pounds. Then I see where the fuel is, 240 pounds. They've marked it on the chart for me here anyways. This gallons here is if the airplane has extended range tanks, which ours does not. So we would use this line and come straight down and it looks like it is just one box over, so I would call it 10.5. And then finally, if there's any baggage. And let's say that we had, I don't know, 40 pounds of baggage. The baggage line is this one right here. So I go up to 40. You know, you have to pay attention to how, many, uh, how much each line is worth. If that's 50, each, worth, or each are worth 10. So I'll go to this line for 40, go across, and drop down, and it looks like it's right about 4. Now I need to add these numbers up. So now that we've added up our total weight and added up our total moment, we need to make sure that these two numbers fit in this envelope right here. So if you look at the side, it says weight, and down here it says moment. So this style chart, I do not have to do that final uh, division where I take the total moment and divide it by the total weight. 
because I already have the numbers to fit in here to make sure that I'm within the envelope. So let's see if we are within the envelope. Our total weight is 2,180 pounds. So I come up here, there's 2,100, so I'm a little above that, and I go straight across, and then on the bottom part, my moment is 93.4, so I find 93, and there's 90, and there's 95, so 93.4 is gonna be about here, and then I'll go up, and then wherever the two shall meet is where we are in that envelope. Now notice we have a normal category and a utility category. The difference in these two categories is how much uh, load factor the airplane can handle or how much weight the wings can support. If we're in the normal category, the airplane can handle positive 3.8 Gs and negative 1.52 Gs. If we're in the utility category, the airplane can handle a positive 4.4 G or a negative 1.76 Gs. So if you wanted to do um, maneuvers such as spin entry and spin recovery, your manual says that you need to be in the utility category. But anywhere in here for normal flight conditions works great. So again, to calculate your weight and balance, it's the weight times the arm equals the moment. You need to consider the basic empty weight the front seat passenger, the rear passenger, the fuel, remember it's in weight, not gallons, the baggage, and then you find your moment, you add all of those up, you go to your graph, or make sure that the two meet somewhere in your envelope, and your airplane will be suitable to fly.